So today I got this philosophical book. Hello fellow podquesters, it is I, Aaron the Podquester, and today I got this awesome, awesome book, Sophie's World. The History of Philosophy, a novel about the history of philosophy by Joe Stein Garter, himself or herself, not really sure, and well, let's get right on to it. So, it's about the history of philosophy. So, from Socrates to Freud. What is truly important in life? Is it really the small thing, taxes, living our daily lives, the, the things that we learn at school? Is that what's truly important? Or shouldn't we be asking questions about how the world came to be? How we came to be? What is religion? What is life? Shouldn't these be the questions that actually matters instead of the random things that we learn at school? Perhaps that is what is truly important, and that is philosophy. Now, like I said, it's a literally this history of philosophy, so there's like a several dozen philosophers in here. Socrates, Plato, Arist Aristotle, um, I don't know, Locke, um, Nisha, blah 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 blah. Nietzsche. There's quite a lot, but I can't talk about all of these people. So I'm just going to talk about one, my favorite philosopher of all time, Descartes. Descartes, he, uh, well, he, he basically thought, trust nothing. The most important things in life can only be obtained through pure reasoning with your own mind nothing else so he first looked he first went ahead and got rid of all of the other philosophical texts from everyone else he couldn't trust those then he closed his eyes because he knew he probably couldn't even trust his senses and he started to reason what could he trust and then he started to doubt his own thoughts then he realized wait a minute i'm doubting my own thoughts Therefore, the person that is doubting must exist. And then, the very, very important line, the very, very famous line of his emerged. I think, therefore, I am. And this shows that the philosopher's greatest gift is his or her mind, in my opinion. And the way I feel, I've just, for me, Descartes is just so cool. He's like the model, because, like, on that spot, he just goes, okay, trust nothing. Just think down and think. Use your mind. Use your reasoning. Use your logic. And for me, that I don't think there's anything more beautiful than that. So that is why Descartes is my favorite philosopher. Now, that is my favorite philosopher. And then now I'll talk about how this book is written. So this is actually not only of just an, an informative philosophical book, it's a novel. So it's a combination of mystery and fantasy combined within while teaching us philosophy. And I think this is really real this is really, really well done. And the and the mystery and the philosophy and, and the mystery and the fantasy aspects itself aren't completely off the, uh, out of the blue. In fact, they are much more connected to the actual philosophies that it is introduced in the book. For example, the philosophies about reality, about our existence. Those things are well combined with the mystery and fantasy elements, and the way it comes together is quite beautiful, and it is quite understandably a best-selling book. And also, there are little breaks between the philosophical discussions. There's a couple, there's like a half a chapter of just the main characters doing stuff and just moving around or thinking rather than just going philosophy, philosophy, philosophy like some other book, like that one, like that, like, like, like that one. <sighs> Anyways, so yeah, so there's some breaks and that just made it a lot more intriguing and a lot easier to read. And of course, the mystery and fantasy elements also helped motivate me to read a lot more. And that's why I feel like this is such a great book. It is not a very short one either. It's like 500 pages. And 
However, all in all, because of the some of the other elements within it, not just philosophy, it made it so much easier to read and yet super, super interesting. And I would highly recommend this to anyone who's interested in philosophy, and this should be your first philosophical book, because it's gonna get you into philosophy without really being oppressed by all the different aspects of it. And as you read through, you start to realize that all of the philosophies are sort of connected. And all of these different philosophical aspects are somewhat connected in some other way. For example, the philosophical aspect of this age appears, and then the next age disagrees or agrees with that philosophical thing, except if they agree, they add something on, on their own. And if they disagree, they have a new version of it, and this branches out and out and out. And now we have loads of different philosophical aspects and ways to think. So, in my opinion, I feel like this book really shows that very, very well. And I think that's pretty much it. I know this was not very long, but honestly, if I grew, go any longer than that, I would literally be talking for hours, because, you know, there's a million philosophers in there. And here, so that's pretty much it. But, one thing I do want to mention is very interesting. Half of the philosopher, it sort of started with the philosophers trying to find God, trying to find this perfect entity, and trying to find out what this immortal entity really is. And then it started to move on to, does God really exist? And then it started to move on to, well, killing God. So I feel like that's really, really interesting. Like, that's how more and more advanced the human mind became as the sciences and different cultures started to cultivate on and on. So I feel like that's a really interesting aspect of philosophy, and it's really interesting to hear the different philosophers. Like, for example, Descartes, he 100% believed in God. Like, seriously, he was a very, very hard Christian. And meanwhile, so meanwhile, at that stage, other philosophers were openly an atheist, and they didn't believe in any religion. So that, I feel like, is an interesting little point. Because you don't have to be an atheist to be a philosopher. And you don't have to be a philosopher to be an atheist. Interesting thing. Anyways, that's pretty much it. And like always, your plot quester, Aaron the Plot Quester. Who is your favorite philosopher? And also, if you're interested in philosophy, like I said so many times before, I would definitely 100% recommend you to read this book to get into it. And yeah, have a great day.